Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I have my daughter sitting on the floor right next to the tripod. And so um, <laughs> I don't know how many takes I'm going to have to do today. Anyhow, um, so this episode is called Something Borrowed and it's about books that I have borrowed from other people and had on my shelf for a ridiculously long time. Um, usually I haven't actually asked if I can borrow them if just people have read them and said I think you might like this and um, given them to me. So um, I'm really struggling for space on my shelves so um, probably need to start reading the borrowed books as well as all of the other things that I've said I should be reading because then I can at least give them back and I'll get some more space. So the first book that I borrowed is from Mum. This is called um, before I go to sleep and I've had this for ages. I've I've seen the film of it um, in the cinema and that was really good. That's starring Nicole Kidman and um, Colin Firth. And basically it's about um, a lady called Christine who um, every time she falls asleep uh, her memory is, is um, forgotten. So she wakes up every day and she doesn't know who she is or where she is or anything about her life. And there's a man who is her husband who is filling her in every day on the details, except we don't know whether we can trust him. So it's a crime thriller, it's a few years old, and um, I'm sure it'll be a nice, easy, quick read. The second one is um, NW by Zadie Smith. So I have three Zadie Smith books, and I'm completely embarrassed to say that I've read none of them. Um, she really appeals to me. I've bought her books without reading any of her work, so I don't know why I haven't read it yet. Um, so NW is my friend Shona's book and um, she lent it to me ages ago, she may well have even forgotten that she lent it to me. Um, it's basically um, set in um, London, North West London, following four different Londoners and um, it talks about uh, how they've grown up and it says it's a portrait of modern urban life. So um, I'm sure that I would enjoy it and when I've flicked through a little bits and pieces I've found the writing really engaging. I think I've listened to the audiobook sample and really enjoyed it but I just haven't ever got around to picking it up for some reason, don't know why. The next one is one I've mentioned on the channel before is The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris. This was lent to me by one of my colleagues at work and um, it's basically an account of um, how theatre was before we knew about um, antiseptic precautions and hand washing and sterilisation and so it's about all the awful things that happened. I think it's quite gory and um, that'll probably make it quite interesting. And um, it was listed for the Welcome Prize this year. So um, this, this I'm having a little break from non-fiction for a while just because I read so much non-fiction recently. But when I go back to it, I'm sure this will be an engaging one and obviously interesting to me because of my job. Um, and it talks about how things improved once people realised that actually washing their hands is essential to your hygiene. The next one is The Instance of the Finger Post by Ian Pears and again I've had this book for um had this book for years. This is another one of my friend Shona's books and this is a historical murder mystery. Um it's about it's set in Oxford in the university and one of the fellows from New College gets murdered and a lady is accused of them being um the murderer and it talks through four different uh, accounts of of events and we have to try and figure out obviously um, what happened. So um, the reason I think I haven't read it is it's 700 pages. It's set in um, the 1600s and it says it's in a time of political and social reform and so I think this time period is really interesting and a murder mystery sounds like it would be quite easy to read and quite gripping. It says that it is um, but um, I think it's just the length that's put me off so it might take me a couple of weeks to read it but who knows so that's that one the next one is another of Shona's books sorry Shona that I'm taking all of your books and um, this is Bodies of Light by Sarah Moss which she read and thought that I would like it Sarah Moss I have bought others others of her books and I have again embarrassing confession that I haven't read any of them yet um even though I'm sure I'll like her because all the people who I um like on booktube like her and um, she sounds brilliant. Um, this one is about a girl called Ali and her father is a painter and her mother is a social reformer and works with um, child prostitutes in the slums of London 
and it's set in the 1800s and Ali wants to be one of the first female doctors so um, and she has to sort of I think it says some tragedy divides her family and she has to go and start a new life and so um, obviously it's of interest to me because it's about um, a female doctor and it's set in a time period which is really interesting and so the writing, Sam Ross's writing is supposed to be fantastic so I'm talking myself quite easily around to reading this one um, it's a really gorgeous edition as well, it's a hardback and um, if I like it who knows I may end up buying it myself so it won't free up a space but I really should hurry up and pick this one up then we have one of my mums again, um, What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. I've read three of her books already, The Husband's Secret, Truly Madly Guilty and The Hypnotist Love Story and I've really enjoyed all of them. They're, um, they're quite pacey normally and there's normally some sort of mystery in them. This one is about um, Alice who is, um, she's woken up in the gym after she's had a bang to the head and when she wakes up, she thinks that she's just got married and she's pregnant with her first child. And it actually transpires that 10 years have passed and she's had three children. And she has fallen out with her sister and she can't remember any of what happens in between. So it sounds um, like a, a fun one. It sounds a little bit similar to the first one, um, When I Go to Sleep, but possibly without the suggestion of menace. The, um, the Murderer's Daughter by Randy Susan Myers is a book which I was lent from an ex-work colleague, which I will get back to her when I've read it. Um, it's basically about um, two children called Lulu and Mary, and they have a really difficult childhood, and one day um, their father comes into the house and he, um, he kills the mother, stabs the youngest daughter, and then tries to kill himself. And he um, effectively orphans them because he goes to prison and the mother has died and they get put in a children's home and it says that they try and spend the next 30 years of their life trying to work out what the heck happened and trying to make sense of the event so this sounds like quite a really um dark and difficult read but also could be worthwhile in terms of sort of examining relationships and um what happens when things go wrong basically um so i think yeah this is it's set in america but um an author I haven't heard of before, haven't read anything of hers before, so that's that one. The next one um, is um, Veronica Decides to Die by Paolo Coelho. Um, this is a really interesting premise. So this is about um, a girl called Veronica who ha apparently has everything that everyone wants and yet she's not happy and she takes an overdose. But the overdose, whilst it doesn't kill her and she wakes up in hospital, it irreparably damages her heart and so she only has a few days to live. Um, it says through these intense days she comes to realise that every second of existence is a choice we all make between living and dying a moving and uplifting story to life one that reminds us that every moment in our lives is special and precious this is a tiny little book um, which I'm sure I could um, I'm sure I could whiz through because it's it's not only thin but it's also a small book um, I haven't read any of Paolo Coelho's books but I've heard him on Super Soul Sunday and I've also got The Alchemist which I'm really looking forward to getting to um so, this is another one of Shona's, again, sorry for having so many of your books. This one is called The Guilty One by Lisa Bannatine, and I think it'd probably be easier if I just read out the synopsis on the back. So it says, um, Daniel Hunter has spent years defending lost causes as a solicitor in London. His life changes when he's introduced to Sebastian, 11 year, an 11 year old accused of murdering another boy. It says, as he plunges into the depths of Sebastian's muddy home life, he thinks back to his own childhood in foster care and to Minnie, the woman who sa whose love saved him until she too betrayed him so badly that he cut her out of his life. So, sounds like a real um, twisty-turny, um, plot-filled bit, a bit of a mystery, a bit of um, stuff about family life. So, um, sounds really good. My mum recommended this one to me. So second to last, I have um, The Liar's Gospel by Naomi Alderman. I saw Naomi Alderman at the um, University of East Anglia Literary Festival and she was so nice and so funny and a really brilliant speaker and I bought two of her books. Um, no, I bought one of her books and um, at the time I've bought The Power since and my friend has lent me this one and um, I haven't read any of them. And again, why haven't I read any of them? Because she was absolutely lovely. And um, this one... 
is set in the time of Jesus's life. And it says, it's a time of brutal tyranny and occupation. Young men and women took to the streets to protest. Dictators put them down with iron force. Rebels attacked the greatest empire the world had ever known. The empire gathered its forces to make those rebels pay. And in the midst of all that, one preacher by the name of Jesus died. And either something miraculous happened or someone lied. This is the truth according to the liar's gospel. That sounds fascinating. I, I didn't know that I've ever... Oh no, I have read the Testament of Mary, which was set in the, about the life of Jesus by Colin Toybin. Other than that, I've never read any other books um, in that time period. So this sounds really fascinating. And then finally, this one hasn't got a cover because it's um, we've taken the dust jacket off. But this is um, H's for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. I saw Helen MacDonald again at the University of East Anglia Literary Festival and saw her being interviewed about the book and it was super interesting. This is basically about after her father's died, um, she is really grieving and she decides to acquire and train a goshawk. And this is her memoir about the time. And I think it's supposed to have really beautiful writing as well as a good a good um, story of the memoir. And she was very engaging as well. So I like a bit of nature writing. I like a memoir. Um, and I'm sure this isn't too um, too difficult to read. I probably could read it quite quickly. I just haven't got around to it yet because I've got so many other things. So if you've read any of those books, I'd be really good, um, really glad to hear your opinions because it might help me choose which ones to go for. Um, if you're interested in reading any of them, let me know. And if you have enjoyed this video, if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you wanted to subscribe to my channel, that would be equally wonderful. So um, I'm trying to get my four-year-old trying to sneak in the screen and trying to keep her away. So um, I will sign off for now. I'll sign off for now and I will see you again another time. Bye.